What's up, guys? Welcome to Believe in Rams. I'm Aaron Coscarelli. I'm so stoked to be able to jump on with you today. I mean, we have a lot to catch up on. Of course, you might have heard some big news out of LA that happened over the weekend. Number 99, hanging it up. We're going to get to all of that momentarily. But first, let me introduce to you a man who needs no introduction. Hall of Famer, Rams legend, and the guy who was predicting plays on Sunday at NFL Network before Tony Romo was doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, Marshall Falk in the house. Marshall, what's up? <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, uh, I'm doing good, doing good, doing good. Yeah. Uh, happy to be on with you. Uh, quite a pleasure. Yeah. Um, how are we doing? How's everything going? You know, I have to give a shout out to our good buddy Eric Weinberger because he says E-Dub. he tells he says he tells everyone that, and it is true. And and E Dub E Dub, I love you so much. Also, Marshall, you have always had an introspective and unique way of how you look at the game, how you evaluate the game, and obviously the way in which you played the game. So, thank you for jumping on. I'm I'm like I'm over the moon excited to have you. Nah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Eric been he's been calling me and then calling me and like saying, Hey man, we want to <laughs> want to get you on. Times haven't synced up. He said, Hey, you know, Aaron's well, I was like, Oh, I get to work with E. All right, done. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I know when he told me you were jumping on, I was like, Okay, uh, we're dialed in here. Now we've got a show. Um, but look. I don't know if you predicted like you predict on Sunday, uh, the games and the plays. Did you see number nine, 99 hanging it up? Did you kind of have an idea? And what was your reaction when you heard Aaron Donald announced his retirement? So I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. All right. Cause um, always, always. Like, I, I'm, I'm in disbelief mm. and I'm, I'm, I'm in such disbelief that I've concocted a, a conspiracy theory <laughs> that, He's done with the guaranteed money. He saw the money that Chris Jones got. And I don't know if Chris Jones got more money than he got. I don't know. I'm just, this is in my head. I'm like, he wants about, he wants more money. He wants to be the highest paid. Mm. Now, it looks good for Hollywood right now. I see he's spending a lot of time with The Rock. You know what I'm saying? He might, he might end up on the WWE, might be cooking, you know, something with The Rock. Who knows? All of that might be in his plans. But I just, I, I, that's just in my head. That's just in my head, Aaron. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm like, training camp's going to roll around in 99. And it, it this, I, I'm telling you, every every professional football player, um, it's weird when you're done playing and everybody else is going to camp and you're not going. You're like, what do I do? Mm. <laughs> what do I do here? Everybody's in camp. Your routine is broken and it takes a while for you to get accustomed to the new routine. So I'm I'm hopeful that uh that that Aaron Donald comes back, mm. uh, that he plays. I, I I think there's more than just a couple of years there. But what I don't know is, and what you normally don't know is what the body's feeling like. You don't know. You don't know how much is he investing in, in into being the person that he is. And he might he might feel he might be slipping a little bit and he don't want to play without being his best. So there's a lot of things in play, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that my conspiracy theory that he'll be coming back is the truth. I mean, you know, you heard it here first, Marshall Falk, the psychic. You were always doing it at NFL Network. But, you know, it's interesting because he wasn't really slipping. I mean, he put in 10 incredible, consistent year after year, high motor, high octane, you know, and that's what surprised, you know, I think some people were saying, you know, Maybe he's going to retire if they lose. But the fact is, he was still delivering on the football field. He was still, like, so dialed in. So I think that's what people are surprised about because he he wasn't slipping. He had he was so good year after year. It, it reminds me of two guys, and I, I've only known of two guys to retire uh, in, in a space like this. And Barry Sanders walked away and Jim Brown. They, they just, it's like, they just walked away. Like they, you know, they, they, they were done playing the game and they were playing at a high level when they did it. And I look at, I look at Aaron and I, I say, you know, he's, he's in that mold of when you look at those two guys, that's all you think about. Uh, you think about what could have been, you know, I know Emmett Smith holds the rushing record, but if Barry wouldn't have retired, would he? Or 
if 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 Jim Brown played more years, would he? You know, that's just playing the what if game. Uh, Emmett definitely did the work, and I give him all the credit. I give all the credit to my brother, but it makes you think about what would have happened or what could have happened if those two guys didn't leave at the height of their careers playing as well as they were playing. I mean, you 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 make me think of an interesting story about Tom Brady, right? His final year, he had announced his retirement the year before he actually retired, stepped away for 40 days. And like you said, he's like, well, everybody is gone doing the routine at training camp. And now what do I do? And maybe that's what ended up happening to Tom deciding to come back. But then he didn't really have a great final year. But I think he got it out of his system. You know, it was like, if, if you, if you, if you have an itch, you need to scratch that itch because here's, here's the one thing about, about, about the NFL game. There's no senior tour. There's no way to, there's no way to just casually, you're not going to go play flag football at seven on seven. When you hang it up, it's over. So you want to make sure that, that you're done. And, and that's what, that's what's, that's why I don't put Brady in the category that I put a Jim Brown or that I put a Barry Sanders because those guys, they just walk that like, I think Jim Brown won the league MVP and then quit or my bad or retired. You know, it's like, it's, it's crazy to think of somebody doing that. And, and Aaron Donald, um, I mean, we watched him play last year. It, it's, mm-hmm. it's just unbelievable uh, that a guy where he is in his career, like, I, I feel like he just got to the peak of his career. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's at his best. You know, I think his talent is still high enough that now the mental part of the game start to start to grow that you start to be even more efficient at getting a job done. And I, th- I, I just think that there's more room there, but I, I, I don't know him better than he knows himself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, if Tom had retired that year before he would have retired raising the Lombardi trophy, like your guy, Peyton Manning, you know, I know you played with him, uh, in Indy. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it is interesting. I love the, the, uh, prediction. Maybe he'll come back when things settle down, or maybe he's going to take an appearance with the rock on uh WW wrestling, whatever. So we'll see, but might be um, cooking. He could be cooking some things with the rock. We'll see. Um, is Aaron Donald, you know, one last question before we go to break. I got some heated reactions to this question. And I I am, I believe this to be true, but do you believe Aaron Donald is the GOAT? You know, that that's hard to say. Um, and I'm gonna say of his era, in the era of uh, quarterback throwing the ball 40 times a game, you know, on, on an average. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for you to sack the quarterback. You know, when you look at Reggie White, Bruce Smith, guys who sacked the quarterback, Michael Strahan, I mean, you weren't, they weren't throwing the ball. You know, it's Bruce Smith and Reggie White, your quarterback threw the ball anywhere from 20 to 25. They got two sacks in games like that. But I think in his era, in his era amongst the guys he played against, yes, I, I'm going to give him that. And, and and that's how I look at the game. I look at the game in era, and then I look at I look at guys and say, I say Aaron Donald could have played in any era, but in his era, he was the goat. He could have played in any era, but in his era, he was mm. the goat. Mm. I love it. Well said. A lot of quarterbacks very happy uh, if indeed <laughs> Aaron Donald retires. In fact, the quarterback potentially the happiest, although he's no longer in the division, was the quarterback sacked the most. Do you know which one that is? Who did he sack the most? Um, it had to be Russell Wilson, was it? Yes, yeah, Russell Wilson. Yeah. I think he, yeah. I think he sacked yeah. him like nineteen times or something. But I mean, to get sacked by Aaron Donald, just that is a pain. I do not even want to wish on my worst enemy <laughs> for Russ. All right, uh, we're gonna talk some free agency when we get back with Marshall Falk. Don't go anywhere. I believe in Rams. We'll be right back. Oh, welcome back, EC Marshall Falk with you. All right, coming off a 10 and 7 campaign, they made it to the wild card. Uh, they are now entering a season potentially without Aaron Donald, if in fact your prediction is not true and he doesn't come back. There are no shortages of storylines to talk about when it comes to the Rams. <clears throat> but let's talk a little bit about free agency because you know a thing or two about uh why players choose 
the teams that they choose. And I'll get to that in a second. But the Rams focused, uh, they focused on offense early. Uh, they got a guard, they got a tight end, they got Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, and it's really interesting because a part of the thing that I wanted to ask you about, uh, athletics, Diana Rossini recently shared that a number of free agents and NFL agents told her the best recruiter over the phone easily is Sean McVay. In fact, Garoppolo, when having a conversation that he had with McVay, said that was what convinced him to sign over LA, over any other team, excuse me, with LA. So my question for you, Marshall, is when a player is choosing a team in free agency, do what do they look for? Is it the coach? Is it the culture? Is it the coordinator? Or is it a bunch of different things and it's not one specific thing? I think uh, for certain positions, all positions other than quarterback, you're looking at the competition. You're looking at who they have, who you're going to compete against. And if you're young in your career, you're just worried about playing and being able to like put up some numbers and 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 and, uh, and make money. If you're older in your career, you're looking at who, who can you win with? You know, you've made money. You want to win a championship. Mm. Like, can I be the piece to get them over the hump? That's what you start to think about. Now, quarterback is unique. You want a place that you can go and compete for the starting job, but you also want to go to go to a place that if you're the backup, the coach has the ability to help you get better. And if you think about what McVay has done, and it's not just it's not just the coach, it's the coaches that he has had under him whom have left and how their quarterbacks have played. It's impressive when you look at all of these guys, they took on young quarterbacks to some degree, as we saw, literally we saw in Green Bay last year. We, we thought that was going to be a, like a, I was like, oh man, I don't know. I don't know what this is going to be like. Whew. Yeah. Listen, that, I was so impressed with the quarterback coach combination and, and, and how they handled themselves and, and watching Jordan do what he did. Mm-hmm. Man, I just loved the, 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 the output that he did and, and to have a coach like, we all thought he was riding Aaron Aaron Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers' coattail, but that wasn't the case. Like he was, he had something to do with Aaron's success while he was there. Now, I'm saying this to say that Sean McVay has a way of getting guys ready and having guys play for him. Baker Mayfield got the contract he got because he got the opportunity he got for being with the Rams the short time he did. The best move he made after Carolina let him go. The best move was going to be a backup, and he ended up playing. And, and learn some things. Mm. And I saw those things translate him in, in him when he was at Tampa and just decision-making. You know, Sean, I think I, I think he makes the, makes the game for a quarterback a lot easier. He answers a lot of questions. And he, he, might, he might have Garoppolo ready to be a starter after a year or two in the Rams system. I mean, that's what's interesting, right, is like what's going through Garoppolo's mind in in choosing to be a backup to Stafford but you're saying he's he's there's a reason for it obviously he wants to work yeah, with Garoppolo McVay. saying if you can't beat him join him mm-hmm. mm. <laughs> ah. you can't beat him join yeah. him yeah yeah well you know speaking of free agency one of the things that's really interesting uh was back in 1999 a certain someone signed a seven-year 45 million dollar contract and at the time became the highest paid ram in history that certain someone is you of course um what was your decision in why you signed with the rams like i need some good stories here like what happened that is that was the hugest contract at the time, and you left the Colts and went to at the time it was St. Louis. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't want I didn't want to leave, um, and when I got to the Rams, I wasn't sure at first. Um, we scrimmaged them the year before, and I got a chance to see Dick Vermeil and how he coached, and and and, and he coached them hard, and, and the guys worked they worked their butts off. But when I got to I, I went I went there. And getting a chance to talk to Isaac Bruce and 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 and, and listening to uh, Trent Green, who they had brought on, and and um, being around Ricky Pro, Orlando Pace, Todd Light, um, a bunch of guys that in college they were guys, 
they came to the league and they had not won. And that's all they kept they kept asking was why not us? Like why can't why can't this be us? And I saw I saw some guys who and, and, and here's what has to happen. You get tired of losing. When you get tired of losing, you start to do anything to win. And anything means in the offseason, anything means it doesn't matter who catches the touchdown. It doesn't matter who catches the interception. It doesn't matter who gets the ball. You're doing anything to win. And, and I saw that in that team. And I was like, I want to be a part of this. This is, this is something good here. Yeah, so it was it was the culture, it was the winning culture, and then of course, obviously, you you ended up winning. No, they, they didn't. It wasn't the winning culture; it was the desire for the winning culture. Mm -hmm. Because before you get into the winning culture, you have to desire that. You have to be willing to do all the things. Dick Ramil had put them through three a days. He was putting them through three hour practices. This was back in the day when you could just work players like a dog. That's mm -hmm. what he had done, and 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 the guys that was still there. Uh, they were tested. They were proven. And, and it was just, it was literally our time. Yeah. But it's interesting. Um, we're going to take a quick break that you didn't initially want to leave, but you ended up choosing the place that was best for you. A bit of a controversy happening in Philly with a certain running back. And we're going to get Marshall's take on it. Do not go anywhere. What is up, everybody? Uh, speaking of free agency and running backs, I'm so glad I have Marshall, my running back, Hall of Famer, uh, Marshall Falk with me. Um, okay, so drama, controversy, whatever you want to call it, happened when Saquon left the Giants and signed with the Eagles. Division rival, I understand. And Giants fans are very passionate about their team. No doubt. It all makes a lot of sense. However, I posted something on social media and I got a lot of flack for it. I will give <laughs> you my opinion when you tell me what was your reaction when Saquon decided to leave the Giants for the arch ne nemesis in the Eagles. What did you think? Um, I, I just couldn't believe the Giants allowed it. Mm. Uh, when, when, when I started to think about where could Saquon go, um, he's, 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 listen, he was really good. And people came to see him play when he was on the Giants. He's box office in the state of Pennsylvania. Box office. Like this, this is like instant, instant. Like you sign Saquon Barkley to the, to the Philadelphia Eagle fans. And it, it, it's like, it's, it's instant instant like that they, they, they will they are coming like it's like and it's and it's a great fit it is a great fit i just here's the thing as we all as we all are wondering and i'm sure the eagles are wondering this too can he stay healthy mm -hmm. well it's interesting okay so then the issue that the giants fans have with him signing should really have with themselves and the team because they let Saquon go when in fact maybe they, they should chose have Daniel a little Jones. Yeah. They chose Daniel Jones. That mm -hmm. they had to make a decision between the two and they chose Daniel Jones. That's what they did. Like let's 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 say what it is. They chose the quarterback. They chose Daniel Jones. Yeah. I mean that's an interesting take for sure. And what I posted and I was personally annoyed about was why any fan would judge a player for a contact sport like the game of football, tackle football, choosing the best contract for him and his family. Like I was angry that we weren't supporting the players more than we should because they, they walk away, they have injuries or, you know, sometimes these guys get that get really hurt. And, um, for all these Giants fans to be so angry, I, I think I triggered like an entire community in New York. But um, let me, let me say ahead. this. Let me say this to, to yeah. if if to the Giant world out the, the 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 New York Giant fans out there, you <laughs> should have been upset if Saquon would have taken less money to go to Philly. That's when you should have been upset. And if he would have went play with a lesser quarterback, if he would have went to the Washington Commanders. You, you should have, it took less money, you should have an issue because he could have stayed with the Giants and, and done better than that compared to, he went to a better team, 
that has a better quarterback and better receivers and pieces around. He upgraded. Don't get mad. Don't get mad when your girlfriend upgrade. Like, you can't get mad. You got to say, oh, yeah, she chose a better man. And to say Quan's piece, he chose a better team. That's that's, that's just the facts in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I – got an earful of all my friends who are Giants fans. And I was like, sorry, not sorry, guys. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. Um, I'm so excited. I have Marshall with me. One more quick segment. And then that's a wrap. Uh, we are going to talk about how the struggle is real for rookie quarterbacks. Stick around. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Aaron Coscarelli, Marshall Falk. All right, Marshall, let's stay in L.A. Let's look ahead to the draft, and let's talk USC's Caleb Williams. His pro day was this week, and a lot of experts are saying he not only looked good, but that he is definitely a lock to go at number one. If that is true, in your opinion, please give us some context on how this is going to go for Caleb Williams. If, in fact, he is selected number one because you actually played with Peyton in 98 when he was a rookie and he went first overall. And it didn't go so well for him his first year, but you can discuss that more. Yeah. Uh, for, first of all, I mean, the fans in Chicago, it's going to be a little different for him. Um, this is they're, – they're passionate. And I, I hope that – the kid has some thick skin. Um, the media won't be as friendly as as they were in L.A. with him playing for the Trojans or um, when he was at uh, Oklahoma. But, 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 but what I believe is I believe that this organization, the people that are in charge now, they understood the things that they lacked. And... When, when, when they brought the other young quarterback in, Justin Fields, when they brought Fields in, they understood the things that was lacked and the issues that he had. They're going to have an opportunity. This regime here is they're going to have an opportunity to start from scratch with the with the blank canvas. And the kid is, listen, he has arm talent. He, he's special. He is special. And and what did they do? They, they, they went out and got Keenan Allen. They're putting pieces around mm. him to, to make sure that what happened to Justin Fields does not happen to this kid. So I'm, I'm excited to see him. I'm, I'm all, listen, I, I watched most of his throws when he was at SC. I, I watched him come onto the scene at Oklahoma. You know, I saw what him and Lincoln Riley was able to do. And, um, and he's tough. You know, I, I think back to last year, uh, I think they were in a bowl game with the hurt leg throwing the ball out there. Um, I'm just impressed with him. I, I hope that they put enough pieces around him to support him in these in, in this first year and a half or two until he get accustomed to the, the NFL life. And when he does, I think, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I think he's another he's a, he's another Mahomes like guy in the sense that in the sense that he's going to transcend. You're going to say, "Wow, this kid is who you can build around." Ooh, a Mahomes comparison. I mean, I like that. Uh, I went to USC myself, so I'm a little biased. But when you say adjust to the NFL, what is the biggest thing he needs to adjust to? Is it the speed? Is it the attention? Is it, like you said, you mentioned you need thick skin? I, I remember, you know, being a rookie and being in a huddle with 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 one of the linemen and, and, and he grabbed my face mask and he said, listen, kid, you hold on to that football. My hopes and dreams, my family's livelihood, it depends on you carrying this football. And I was like, the game went from, oh, this is a fun game to, wow, this is serious. So he, he has to understand that through his learning process of him becoming a pro, they need to see him take it serious. They need to know that he's doing everything that he can to help them win. Because when teams when, when teams figure out that the quarterback isn't the hardest worker, he isn't putting the time in, they go south on you real quick as a quarterback mm -hmm. or as a guy when you're the guy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a I, – I didn't even think about that. How many other guys are on the team where they're like, I need to make these numbers. And if you're not showing up, 
my my family, my livelihood, it is on the line. And that is another element of pressure that you don't even think about disappointing your guys in the locker room. That's tough. That would be tough for sure. Well, good luck to Caleb. Uh, I want to say thanks to Marshall Falk for jo joining me on my first Ram show. What an excellent guest. I always appreciate your time, your opinion, your take on everything. And hopefully Aaron Donald comes back. We can still hold out hope. <laughs> we'll see. Just remember, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. For Marshall Falk, I'm Aaron Coscarelli. Guys, thank you for tuning in. See you next time.